Good morning! And look, it's another beautiful day. And today we are leaving Plovdiv, sadly. It's had great fun here, there's been so much going on, so much more to see, but we have to move on. We are going to visit Shipka. So, not so long drive, let's pack up the car and go and see some more Bulgarian country. I parked a little close to the wall on the other side, so I'm gonna have to climb in via this side. I'll get back to you soon. I've arrived in Chepka, a sleepy little village. Let's go and have a look. Chepka Hotel. Oh, goodness. I get in. It's very nice, look at that. Little restaurant too here. Wow. Beautiful. And peacefully quiet. All I've got to do is find somebody there. Reception is a little quiet. Ah, here comes somebody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> uh, my name is Simon. I have a reservation for tonight. I have a single room. Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay. Got my key. Go and have a look at my room for the night. Nice sleepy quiet little hotel. Apparently there's a nice veranda outside and this is my room. Okay, it's got a ceiling fan, two twin beds. Here's the bathroom. Again, wash and basin, toilet, and a shower hiding in there. Uh, towels on the bed. Oh, foam mattress, and let's have a look. What oh, windows open? Oh, beautiful view! Big veranda to go and sit on as well. A lovely view over the hills. That's nice. Oh, and there is a TV. There we go. So here's our little room for the night in Shipka, which I believe costs 19 euros. I don't think that includes breakfast. But this will do us nicely for tonight while we have a little look around Shipka. Now as you approach Shipka or drive around, you'll see, tucked against the mountains, these gleaming golden domes. Now that is a Russian-style church that was built as a thank you for something. Can't remember what. Anyway.
look at that. He says, sitting in the car, hiding from the wind and the rain. Uh, came to the top of the hill. This is about a 30-minute drive from Shipka village. Um, up a twisty, twiny road. I don't think there's any form of public transport up here. So you can either hire a taxi driver in the town, if you can find one. Maybe a hotel can arrange one. Because there's not much happening in Shipka. But anyway, up the top is this amazing Soviet-era conference centre. It's all been sitting and decaying for years now. It um, must have been quite amazing when it was uh, opened, when it was first when it was first built. Um, but now it's sitting decaying. It's it's one of these many things that you'll find in Bulgaria that is a reminder of both the Soviet um, era when it was part of the Eastern Bloc and of its socialist past. And it's always good to remember our history, but we don't always like our history, which is why the victor always changes the history to suit his or her story. But anyway, this is close to Shipka. I've got a car so I can drive up here. Um, it's quite amazing to come up and have a look around. There's fantastic views all around as well. They're building wind farms over there because it is really windy up here. Um, just to give you an idea, in Shipka it was 28 degrees. When I came up here it was only 17 degrees. So uh, I'm in shorts and t-shirt and I was, it was a bit cool and breezy out there. But, uh, and it rained. So I was hanging around hoping that it would clear for the evening, but I, all I can see is more and more rain coming in. The hills around here are stunningly beautiful, but rapidly disappearing in grey swathes of rain and cloud. So I'm going to head out soon. I have got some shots of this. I hope they'll be okay and give you an idea. Can't get inside. You're not allowed inside, primarily because it's too dangerous. The thing is falling apart. Maybe there'll be plans in the future to restore it and make it a tourist attraction as a positive reminder of the past that Bulgaria has suffered through and come through and come out better the other side. That will be a good spin on it that, um, that I hope they do because it is quite an amazing edifice. Um, and it's in a beautiful location. I mean, if they put a visitor centre in there, um, you imagine the views from up there and the shelter from the wind. But how much money it would cost and whether it would be worth it, I don't know. For the future, maybe. Because Bulgaria is really striving to open itself up to tourism. And it really does have a lot to offer. Um, it's history, not just Soviet history, I mean... I've just come from Plovdiv, which is one of the oldest places in all of Europe. I mean, it has amazing history. The mountains and the scenery are also beautiful. There's some beautiful hiking trails around here when it's not raining. The old churches, the food is great as well, and the people are fantastic. Um, and it's not very touristified at the moment. You know, it's got, it's got that nice wanting to develop. They're developing nicely. They're not developing wildly. There's a few tourists here and there. I mean, like, I'm sitting up here. I know it's raining, in, but I am the only person here. And a few of the places I've been to, um, I went to the church earlier, the, um, the Russian-style church here. And when I first arrived, when I walked up to it, only person there and there's not many foreign tourists at the moment it's school holidays in Bulgaria so there's quite a few Bulgarians traveling around which is lovely to see and they're all so very helpful and respectful um, a lot of the times I'm wandering around looking confused not understanding the the alphabet of words and there's always someone come to help and even though they struggle with their English they try their best um, so I'd encourage you if you're thinking come to Bulgaria give it a go it's a little bit of an adventure but it's not difficult and I can see light on the horizon over there, and I can see a little bit, there's a huge rain cloud moving across that way. And brights coming up, bright lights coming up behind there, but no pictures of it in the sunlight. Oh, and I've got to go for my supper too.